Russia and Africa's partnership is more than just a historical footnote. It's a dynamic story of economic interests, political partnerships, and strategic moves that are shaping the future of an entire continent. Africa is a continent with boundless potential, rich in resources, and teeming with promise. Africa has long been a land of opportunity, but it's also faced its fair share of challenges, and that's where Russia comes into play. Africa is a treasure trove of resources, a land of untapped potential, and a partner with whom Russia can work hand in hand for mutual benefit. For example, through the Russian-sponsored mega-projects in Africa, we're about to explore today, which aren't just about economic gain but also about transformation, development, and making a lasting impact. So, without further ado, let's dive in. 5. El Daba Nuclear Power Plant, Egypt This project is about harnessing the power of atoms to light up Egypt's future, and it's being brought to life by none other than the Russian State Atomic Energy Corporation, Rosatom. First off, the project will be located in El Daba, which is nestled on the Mediterranean coast, about 250 kilometers west of Alexandria, Egypt. Notably, El Daba is set to be Egypt's first-ever nuclear power project, and it's a colossal one. We're talking about a whopping $30 billion project that'll be owned and operated by Egypt's very own nuclear power plant authority, NPPA. Russia is stepping up to the plate with a whopping 85% of the financing, to the tune of $25 billion, provided as a state loan. Egypt, on the other hand, will cover the remaining 15% through installments. Furthermore, Russia's Rosatom is no stranger to nuclear power, and this is their big debut in Africa. El Daba will boast four pressurized water reactors, PWRs, with a total capacity of 4.8 gigawatts. Once it's up and running, El Daba is expected to provide a whopping 50% of Egypt's power generation capacity. Moreover, site approval was granted in March 2019, and the first construction permit was issued in June 2022. They hit the ground running with construction for Units 1 and 2 starting in July and November 2022, and the first concrete for Unit 3 was poured in May 2023. Notably, the commissioning of the first unit is expected to kick off in 2026, and the entire plant with all four units will be operating at full steam by 2030. Besides, the El Daba will help in lighting up homes and also light up opportunities and dreams. For instance, the project is set to boost Egypt's economy and industrial development in a big way, creating up to 50,000 jobs along the way. 4. Rosatom's Uranium Mining Projects, Namibia Rosatom, through its global mining company Uranium One, is making waves in the heart of Namibia. First off, Namibia is home to some of the world's richest uranium deposits, and Rosatom has its eyes set on tapping into this gold mine. Their mission is to start mining uranium in Namibia by 2029. The geological studies confirm the presence of a colossal sandstone-type uranium deposit. As a result of the discovery of abundant, rich uranium ore, Rosatom is putting up a cool $500 million for this venture. They're aiming for a planned output of a mind-boggling 3,000 metric tons of uranium per year. Besides, they're introducing a game-changer to Africa, the in-situ learning, ISL, method. It's the primary method of uranium mining worldwide, but it's making its African debut here. What's so special about it? Well, it's all about effective and sustainable production. If all goes well and ISL proves its worth, Rosatom might splash over $300 million on a uranium mill. Overall, the project is expected to increase Namibia's gross domestic product by a whopping 1% to 2%. Notably, over $50 million has already been invested in the Namibian economy since the launch of Project Wings. Also, the project has already created 500 jobs for the locals. 3. African Center for Nuclear Science and Technology, Zambia the African Center for Nuclear Science and Technology, NSTC, is Rosatom's non-energy superstar. It boasts a research reactor, a multi-purpose irradiation facility, a nuclear medicine center, and more. Notably, isotopes produced here are used in the diagnostics and treatment of oncology diseases, 
and around 12% of 804 million Africans older than 75 years are affected by cancer. Plus, the irradiation facility can also treat food products. Think about it, 20% to 45% of produce worldwide is lost to pests or spoilage. Irradiation increases shelf life, reduces waste, and meets export standards. Besides, the NSTC opens doors for local staff training and extensive research opportunities, from mineral resources to air, water, and soil studies. Therefore, to realize the benefits, Rosatom is already building a nuclear science and technology center in Zambia. And guess what? Zambia's eyeing the big leagues with plans for a future nuclear power plant. 2. $10 billion infusion into Angola's infrastructure. Angola has been grappling with poor road infrastructure and limited access to energy for far too long. Traveling outside major towns can be quite an adventure. Also, safety on Angola's roads has been a major concern, and it's time for a change, so Russia is stepping in to make a difference with a $10 billion infrastructure project in Angola. Notably, the projects will predominantly focus on the energy sector. Think hydroelectric dams, wind power generation, solar panels, and power transmission lines, as well as the basics such as financing roads, homes, and other vital infrastructure. Notably, the Russian government, the private sector, and international investors are all stepping up to finance the project. 1. Kandaji Dam, Niger The Kandaji Dam is a large multipurpose dam under construction on the Niger River. The site is situated near the small town of Kandaji, Talabri Department, Talabri Region, Niger, 180 kilometers northwest of the capital Niamey. The final design of the dam was prepared with financing from the Islamic Development Bank and that of a 2,000 hectare, 4,900 acre, irrigation project with financing from the West African Development Bank. Notably, construction of the dam began in August 2008. According to the World Bank, the entire Kandaji program will be implemented in three phases, Phase Me, which comprises the Kandaji Dam and its reservoir, the hydromechanical equipment for the 18 gates, economic and local community development, and the implementation of environmental and social mitigation measures for resettled people. The Earth Dyke Dam will be 8.4 kilometers long, creating a reservoir of 1.6 billion meters and a regulated discharge of 120 meters per second, or 3.8 kilometers per year, in Niamey. Phase 2 comprises the construction of the hydropower plant, transmission lines, road, irrigated agricultural development, and expanded local and community development in the reservoir area and downstream, and Phase 3 focuses on the development of irrigated agriculture and the scaling up of the economy in local community development of the region, including fisheries, livestock, agribusiness, and trade. Construction of the dam itself was contracted to the Russian company Zarabezvodstroy, which signed the construction contract in September 2010. The hydroelectric plant will have a capacity of 130 megawatts, and a 132 kilovolt high voltage line will be built over 188 kilometers to Niamey. Irrigation development will consist of a first phase of 6,000 hectares, mainly for the benefit of resettled communities, with a medium-term target in 2034 of 45,000 hectares out of an irrigable potential of 122,000 hectares. Construction has been slower than expected, with interruptions due to financing problems, and thus completion is expected in 2025. According to the World Bank, the Kandaji program, Phase 1 and Phase 2, is expected to cost 785 million US dollars. Conclusion From Rosatom's uranium mining projects to the African Center for Nuclear Science and Technology in Zambia, and not to forget the $10 billion boost to Angola's infrastructure, these projects hold the promise of transformation. We've seen the potential benefits they bring, including cleaner energy, economic growth, job opportunities, and safer roads. However, questions arise about debt sustainability, environmental impacts, and geopolitical tensions, which are not easy hurdles to overcome. But the economic, social, and geopolitical implications are immense. Africa has the opportunity to diversify its energy sources, reduce poverty, and strengthen its position on the global stage. So, what do you think? 
We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for joining us. If you found this journey as captivating as we did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more enlightening content.